time for new ideas. Uh, this is a research report we uh, um, came out with. Uh, the title of Time for New Ideas um, was really based around the concept that uh, Central Eastern Europe was now moving into a new phase where its growth really now depended on actually sort of homegrown innovation and we felt that now Eastern Europe, Central Eastern Europe now was moving into a different phase. What the key sort of conclusions were um, first of all, the basic thing is that innovation was essential for growth. Um, up until recently, um, growth has been based on assimilating technologies um, and ideas and processes from foreign companies, and the multinational company investment in this region has been absolutely critically important. Now we're moving into a new phase. Um, and the reason is that although the, what we call the spillovers, the, the positive benefits of a lot of multinational company investments in this region um, have, been, have been great, at the level of innovation, where you really need to generate new ideas, local companies haven't necessarily benefited as much as they might have. And that's the critical point to understand. Um, and as we show both in the survey and in the model, that this region does underperform its potential. And when we've done the forecast, we expect it to, uh, this underperformance to continue. And the, the way to improve that situation is to um, improve the inputs into innovation. I'll explain that um, I I shortly. Uh, is, this is not a pessimistic report. We see lots of evidence of small and medium-sized enterprises, local enterprises, coming up with new ideas, developing them, exporting them. Um, but it's not nearly close to the potential uh, of this region. Uh, hold on, talent, uh, the two other points. Talent is a very uh, major concern. We, obviously, this has come up um, in, the, in our previous uh, presentations. The quality of the workforce, that's a vital thing. Recruiting, training, retaining, all these sort of issues. Um, and then, of course, the role of government. Um, I'm not going to deal with the Romanian government because I'm not much of an expert in, in, in the ins and outs of policy here. But broadly speaking, there are pros and cons. It's not, it's not entirely a bad story, um, but it has to be nuanced. Now, if we go to the model, there's three parts to this. Uh, first of all, we have a ranking of innovation performance. Um, secondly, we have a forecast. So this is what, what we, how well the countries have done, the countries in the region have done up to now, what we think is going to happen over the next four or five years. And then what we've done, and this is the critical point, is that we've separated the inputs from the outputs. When people talk about innovation, they often mix it all together. They talk about patents and, and, and citations and R&D development and all these sort of things. And what we're saying is that you've got to calculate the inputs into innovation. So we're talking about um, education of the workforce, technical skills of the workforce, broadband technology, and these sort of things and then see how that translates into outputs. And in terms of outputs, we've mainly looked at patent data, although we did look at citations um, in journals um, and, and surveys um, and tech share of exports, but basically it's patents. And so in terms of the ranking, I mean, Romania doesn't do particularly well, but actually that's not really a surprise because it's generally in line with the, the economic development of the country. So you'd expect it to be um, rank sort of towards the bottom. But actually all of Central Eastern Europe is, is, is lagging. And, and really, you know, the best performer, which is Slovenia, we rank 24th in the world, which is not particularly good. Um, more importantly is that except for Slovenia, the what we call the innovation enablers, the inputs going into innovation that should create a better innovation environment, doesn't, isn't reflected in the outputs. In other words, there's a lot going in to pre prepare for, to, to, to create an innovative environment, but the actual what comes out, i.e. patents in this case, lags that. And that's the critical thing to understand. That means that connection has to be improved. So, two aspects really to look at. Um, one is the outlook of the multinational companies that have come in over here over the last two decades and then the look at how domestic companies have responded. Now in terms of the sort of business history of this region, multinational companies have obviously been extremely important but what comes out from the surveys and from the modeling um, and from the interviews is that 
when it comes to innovation, generally speaking, multinationals are not that interested in the Central East European um, region. They're not really putting much R&D facilities into this region outside of the, sort of the big four country, Hungary, Czech, Poland, and so on. Um, actually, there's very little R&D. Innovation is being done outside of the region, back at headquarters. Um, and insofar as Central Eastern Europe countries are brought into this, it's a very tightly, um, tightly integrated system of innovation. So it doesn't spread out into the general economy that well. And our survey and the model really does demonstrate that, um, that the links are not very, very tight. Um, and multinational companies, generally speaking, don't expect that situation to improve. Um, and we see that in many ways when we look at the way the links of foreign companies with local universities and institutions here, they're actually quite weak. We said something like only 5% of foreign companies thought that their relationship with the university could be construed as being excellent, far, far behind um, local companies' relationships. So a sort of reticence on the part of multinationals when it comes to really investing in the innovation side here. So can the domestic companies take up the slack? Um, can they take up the running? Well, the good news is generally we found a lot of evidence that companies here, local companies here, really are trying. 65% um, expected to increase their R&D uh, activity and 18% expected a, quite a significant increase in coming years. But what we found was that there was a discrepancy between the inputs and the outputs in this. When you looked at which were the local companies that were financially successful and which were less successful, it didn't seem to make any difference how much R&D was going into their business activities. And that, we thought, was a little bit worrying because what it means is something is going wrong in the middle of it. The two areas where it did make a difference was the ability to absorb foreign technology. In other words, those companies that were successful also tended to be the companies that could absorb foreign technology. Um, and uh, the other factor that we found, a very clear linkage, was with those companies that were tightly li linked to the universities in one way or another in terms of research departments also tended to be the ones that did well. Those are the two factors that stood out. Um, and uh, so I think that's, in a sense, um, a quite an important guide as to what needs to be done. Now, in terms of just the general uh, operating environment, the kind of challenges that local companies are likely to face in this region, I mean, it's important in terms of exporting, um, in terms of how you generate new ideas. This is quite a, 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 a sort of well-practiced process in Western companies. How do you actually create structures for new ideas. And we found quite a lot of evidence that this was happening and it was sort of successful. But the one area where there were real major obstacles here was on the question of what were talent um, and human resources. Um, and when we looked at, when we look at the areas which are considered to be important factors, um, human resources, talent-based issues, were three of the top four most sort of biggest concerns for companies. Um, the most important was the availability of university graduates. 56% um, um, said that this was a, a, key, a key issue. The technical skills of the workforce and the availability of scientists and engineers. Of course, the quality of the IT and communications infrastructure was regarded as the most important thing. And it was also clear that the domestic companies found this talent challenge far more uh, critical than foreign companies coming in. And then finally, uh, the role of the government. Obviously, you can't exhort your population to innovate. You can't tell them to innovate. Uh, sometimes people claim that this is the shortcoming of the European Union, is that it's more exhortation and less practical um, changes. But government can help and it can also hinder. It can get in the way um, as well as supporting. So in a sense, if you, know, if you can't help, then step out of the way of business. Broadly speaking, some of the problems that companies have found with governments across the region, it's not particularly a Romania issue here, is that officials don't understand the innovation policies or they don't understand the tools that are available and the impact um, of certain uh, policy instruments that can help.